Hello, this video will review for faculty and staff how to use OneDrive to store and access your files off campus. The benefit of using OneDrive is you can access it from any computer. So if you are on multiple computers all around campus, um, if you want to um, access that information from your phone, if you maybe want to access or upload some files from home that you'll later use on campus, you're able to do through all through OneDrive without having to remote access into any specific computer. To begin, you would need to start on the Gordon State College webpage and you would need to scroll down to the very bottom and choose Gordon Email. So this is accessing your email from the web that you're able to do from any computer with internet access. So again, you do not need to remote into your computer um, at work. If you're at home, you don't need to remote into your computer at work to be able to access your OneDrive. So we'll choose Gordon Email. It may ask you to um, authenticate in. So log in with your Gordon email username and password. If you are off campus, it might ask you to use the multi-factor authentication process to where it sends you a push to your phone and then you have to um, allow for it to um, access. So once you're into your email, you want to choose these icons up here at the top left, your app area. And notice you have lots of apps that you can use here. You have Outlook, which is what you are in by default, as well as other ones. And you can actually choose all apps to even see more. So what we're going to choose right now is OneDrive. And this is sort of your cloud storage. Um, if you want to compare it to Google products, this is your Google Drive area. So this will open up an area where you can upload your files and actually even create files and have them stored right within OneDrive to be used and viewed later from any device. So you will have, um, if you have things uploaded, you'll see them here. You can create files as well as just individual um, individual. You can create folders as well as individual files. Um, you can choose to upload a file. So if you're uploading, you know, you've created a document, you know you may want to um, access it later from home or you may want to work on it later from home. Um, you can choose upload, you can choose to create a folder or you can choose to upload just an individual file. So from here you would just grab a file upload it in, give it just a, a couple of seconds and it will actually um, upload itself. It'll even tell you when it's been uploaded here. I can choose share here if I want to or I can find it um, down at the bottom of my of my list of, um, of files. And then by clicking beside the file, um, you'll see a toolbar of different things you can do with it. Um, you can choose to open it and whatever it was made in. So this is a Word document, so it would open to Word online uh, for you to continue edit it. Um, you can share it um, so that if this is something you want to share with someone else and you don't want to actually send them the actual document, you know, attach it as a, as, a, um, as a Word file in an email or whatnot, you can choose to share it. And then in doing so, um, you can set it to where anyone with the link can view it. And then you would just copy that link. You would get the shareable link. You would just drop that in Teams, in a chat, um, in an email, wherever. And it would link them to be able to view it without actually having to um, attach it. You can choose, this is the share option here, this little arrow. Um, if you want to choose it there, you can also change it to where only certain people can view it. So anyone with the link, only people at Gordon State College with the link. So it would let, um, basically they would click on the link, it would ask them to log in to their, with their Gordon email username and password, um, and then it would let them see it, um, people with existing access or specific people. So if you set specific people, um, you'll be asked to put in their emails um, so that you're restricting it only to those um, who, are, who are listed. Um, also within here, you can choose for specific people, you can allow them to edit the file. So if you're gonna be working collaboratively with someone, you can check it to where they can um, allow, you can actually let them edit the file. You can allow them to edit, but then turn it on to where they can only review it. So it's not gonna let them edit the content, but it'll let them leave like comments, things like that. Um, and then you can choose, um, if you like to, if you are not allowing editing, you can actually block the download where they can view it, but they can't actually download it and save it locally. So several other options here. 
depending on the level of restriction of access, you'll see different um, settings here. So with anyone with the link, it's not going to allow you to allow editing because that would essentially allow anybody with the link to your document to be able to edit it. So probably something that you don't want. Um, you can actually set an expiration date to where they can view this file up until this date. Um, and then at that point, the link doesn't work anymore and they can't see the file. You can put in a password um, so that you would give that person the password. They can click on the link. They'll be prompted to put in a password. If they know the password, they can put it in and then see the document. So other levels um, of security. And again, you can also block the download if you want to. So those are your general sharing options. Um, just double check before you copy the link that you have the share that you that you want, the level of restriction that you want. And then notice once you have it clicked, you have other options up here of copying the link, downloading the file into Word, PowerPoint, Excel, whatever it was made in, printing it, deleting it, renaming it. Um, and then with these, you can actually turn on a Power Automate, which is kind of like a power user to create things like um, auto signatures, that kind of thing. What's also great about OneDrive is say that you want to edit this file, um, you can actually click on it and choose to open it um, and you can open it in Word Online um, and that would allow you to continue to edit it. So it will, even though it wasn't created in Word Online, it was created in Word, um, the actual application, I'm able to come in and add in additional information and it would go ahead and auto-save there for me. Um, so this is the way that I can work on it. Um, if I do need to download it at any point, I can choose and go through the process of um, file export and then I can export it as whatever it was initially made in. I can also choose to print it from here. But since I've added a couple of things, I'm just going to X out since it did save. And then keep in mind here that I can always click on it and download it, and it will download the most recent version um, in whatever it was made in, which this one was made um, in Word. It will also auto-update any links that you have. So say I sent out three or four links to other people to view this document, and I said, oops, I have a typo. I can go right back into this file, fix my typo, um, and then I don't need to update those for three people that I sent it to. It will dynamically update with that link. If you select the file, and you choose your different options here, notice that there is a version history to where you can see when it's been edited and by whom. Um, and you can actually choose this and choose to open the file to be able to see what was happening at that particular, what was added at that particular moment. Um, and say that you made a, a, a mistake on one and you want to restore a previous version, you can do that as well here. So that all works with uploading a file um, into, into OneDrive. Um, the other option is to create new files, so if you choose new, notice you can create all of these tools and these are essentially the same application that you're used to using with Word, PowerPoint, Excel, etc., but it is online um, and then as you edit, it auto saves it and you can choose to share it here and you can work collaboratively with someone, give someone access to be able to edit the file with you or just able to view it. Um, and then once it is, as it is being saved, it is held here in your OneDrive to be able to access um, at any given time from any given computer. Um, you can also choose to sync your OneDrive with your desktop to where things will move from your OneDrive to your desktop, your desktop to your OneDrive um, to keep things synced up if you choose. Um, or you can just manually choose to upload what the files that you think that you're actually going to use. Um, if you have a lot of files, I would encourage you to say on your desktop, move all those files into a folder and then choose to upload the entire folder and it will save you from having to pick every single document. It'll just upload the whole folder with all the files in it. So this may be a great solution um, instead of trying to remote into your computer to view files to go ahead and take a moment to upload them into your OneDrive and you'll be able to access them as well as edit them as well as share them from any um, computer with internet access.